and we're back with another episode of Cult Classic Neo Friends. I'm your host, Michael T. Shamborn III, and as you can see, today we're playing Metroid for Throwback Thursdays, arguably one of my favorite, or maybe even my most favorite game of all time. So, Throwback Thursdays, I don't know if I'll do this every single Thursday for the future of this channel, but it's something I wanted to do because even though this is Cult Classic Neo and we may be focused on new things, I think sometimes we have to pay homage to the old and if you all will indulge me I'd love to hang out with you and talk with you about why this is a contender for my most favorite game of all time now the idea behind these particular episodes is to keep them short and sweet uh, we're gonna focus on Brinstar for this particular episode we've already got the rolling ball the goal of today's episode is to get the long beam tomorrow's episode we will get I believe the bombs for the uh, the rolling ball jam and that way you don't have to watch hour-long episodes of Metroid you can just get short sweet bite-sized episodes of this wonderful game we like to call the Metroid but yeah there's so many things that go into making this one of the best games I think of all time and it's unfortunate too now before some of you may be thinking like well, wait a minute he's talking about cult classics how is Metroid considered a cult classic well for me you know, if you really look at Metroid compared, you know, in and of itself, I don't think you can call this cult classic status. But I think if you were really to look at Metroid against its competitors in every single era, it's undersold. Uh, you know, and whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent it is not the point of my commentary, but Metroid has not done anywhere near as well as games like Mario, games like Zelda. It just and it's funny like when I first learned that I thought that was insane I'm like how is Metroid because for years I used to wonder how come new 2d Metroid games don't ever come out anymore and when they do they're kind of weird and 2.5 D and just crazy Nintendo style stuff instead of just a straight-up spiritual successor to my you know favorite game of all time and one of the things I was inclined to do was to go look at the sales and then I realized like oh Metroid doesn't sell like it's one of the lowest selling top Nintendo games uh, in the top I guess I want to say it's been a while since I've looked at the numbers but I don't even know if it's top 10 it really doesn't sell that one I was like well I guess I have my answer as to why we don't see a lot of Metroid games every every year I mean I'd love to see a new Metroid game every single year I'd buy it every time you know instead you know, I have to buy games like Axiom Verge, which I am by no means complaining about, my friends. That game is worth every penny of your time. But, you know, I would still love to have me a good old Metroid game. And it doesn't really happen. It's all good. Maybe the new Nintendo NX will bring us some of that Metroid buttery goodness. that we. And I think part of the problem, too, is Metroid kind of line extended itself with the Metroid Prime series and started focusing on 3D. And maybe it's put them in this weird place where now most of the people who are playing games, especially the ones watching YouTube videos, probably grew up with Metroid Prime, whereas I grew up with this. You know, I got Metroid, I want to say, for a birthday gift one year. And, you know, it's one of those things where, oh, wow, I couldn't get that? It's weird. I bust him, bust him until he drops health and then you ball out. See that? Anyway, I played this game and played. I had to actually get a lot of f help from my friends to beat this game because, you know, back in the day, there was no. In back when this came out, there was no internet. That wasn't happening. Forget about it. It wasn't going down, friends. And um, so I had to go to school and ask my friends. And it's funny because by the time I got around to Metroid, it had already been out for years. Like, I was really kind of late to the party with the NES. Not because I had other consoles that I liked more, but simply because my parents didn't buy me an NES until late in the game. <laughs> That's just the way it went down, you know what I'm saying? Oh, that was a cheap shot. Chip shot. Cheap suits. How cheap? Cheap as hell? Oh, look at me jumping. I'm too real. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, I felt like Throwback Thursdays deserved a little Metroid in our lives. And that's the way it's going to be, ladies and gentlemen, as long as I'm in charge. Metroid is always going to have a seat at the table. Now, I don't know <laughs> how many people on YouTube are actually going to sit around watching a Metroid video, but I'm making it, dag nabbit. 
I don't know. Maybe a bill, maybe a million people will watch this. Be like, you know what? That Michael T. Shamborn guy. I like the cut of his jib. Let's go watch his Metroid show. And I'd be like, thanks, guys. Thanks for like liking the cut of my jib. I have no idea what that means, by the way. I just know Mr. Smithers used to say it all the time on The Simpsons. And there's one really funny Simpsons episode where, you know, Mr. Burns is doing his thing as he always does. He sees Homer. And all right, let's make sure we are going the right direction to get to what I want to get to. I've kind of lost my bearings. Nope, we're in good business. And Mr. Mr. Burns asks Mr. Smithers for like the 500th time, Mr. Smithers, who's that young go-getter right there? I like the cut of his jib. And Mr. Smithers goes, that's Homer Simpson, sir. You ask about him every episode. Simpson, eh? <laughs> Like he's so rich, he just forgets people exist. <laughs> How would you like to be that rich? You want to be as rich enough to just be able to forget that uh, Abraham Lincoln? What was he doing? Who was Abraham Lincoln? What's he all about? Uh, I don't know. Emancipating the slaves, sir. Oh, slavery, eh? Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> like he was there. <laughs> Although Mr. Burns is probably a slave owner. I'm just saying, Mr. Burns is probably, I mean, he probably was. It's its not racism. I'm just saying, who am I talking to? Am I talking to myself and answering myself? I may need to get myself some help. <laughs> I think that might need to happen. Anyway, ladies and gents, we're definitely going to have more opportunity to talk about why Metroid is so amazing. We've now got the long beam, and that's part of it. You know, this exploration and discovery is kind of the first theme I'll throw out uh, for today's discussion. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and adjourn here. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next time when we will go get the bombs for this ball that we have here. That's going to be the next uh, focal point. Still going through Brinstar to get it. And then eventually we'll move into Norfair and start doing some work over there. But again, thank you so much for being a part of this community and a part of what we do and a part of you know this positive kind of counterculture that we want to build around video games where and, and granted it's saying counterculture is a little bit overdoing it it's not like all of video games are cynical negative people in fact most people in video games are not but there's a very loud vocal minority that i don't necessarily want to stop from existing because they have every right to be here that we have i just want our voice to be louder if that's okay with you all and that's something you want to be a part of I'd ask you to subscribe. Keep up with what we're doing here. Keep up with what we're doing here is what I was trying to say on Cold Classic Neo. It's been a pleasure, friends. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.